Today I'm going to talk about the actress Yvette Vickers. I've written something about her on findadeath.com and she was included in one of our documentaries as well, but I've never I've never delved into her actual autopsy report which um is for you guys that are annoyed with my pronunciation, uh this is a lot easier because because there was minimal uh uh evidence to have to look at which we'll get into but Yvette Vickers was an actress um, she was in Attack of the 50 Foot Woman she was in well I knew her because it was Sunset Boulevard and she was one of the extras in the movie Sunset Boulevard and I know so much about that movie and she was this uncontrollably, uncontrollably laughing person who was on the telephone when William Holden wanted to use the phone <laughs> When you're through with that thing, can I have it? Hey, you forgot this. You know, she never, her career never really went anywhere. In 1959, she was a playmate, a Playboy playmate of, uh, yeah, Playboy playmate in 1959. And a lot of bad films, a lot of bad horror movies. Now, she was an eccentric person. At the end, she lived on a street called West Wanda up in Benedict Canyon. And you know how I feel about Benedict Canyon. All kinds of weird things happen in Benedict Canyon, and this is certainly one of them. So, she is a person who, I mean, so she wanted to be left alone, we'll say that. She was a very private person. Sometimes she'd go to Vegas for, uh, you know, several days. And when she was gone, she put her mail on hold. But all her bills were on uh, an automatic payment, which is important in this story. And the same with her mail being on hold. But she was quirky and not particularly friendly to the residents, not particularly unfriendly. But it was one of those things that she, you know, wanted to, <laughs> didn't want people to bother her. And they didn't bother her. And that's part of what happened here. That was part of the problem. But, you know, she was like one of those actresses. I met a million of them at the, uh, at the autograph shows. And, you know, they really enjoyed getting attention for the roles that they did. And, you know, they're actors, and actors want attention. So uh, she enjoyed going to the autograph shows and, uh, and talking to people who were, you know, fans of what she did. But she was quite beautiful uh, when she was a playmate. And she lived in this really quirky house up in Benedict Canyon. They say that she was really paranoid. And this house that she lived in was like a tree house, uh, and, and quite literally, as you'll see in some of the pictures. And she, they say that she was kind of paranoid. I know she had a set of bells on her back gate that would, you know, that would that would ring whenever anyone opened the gate. But they say that she was really nervous with every passing car. But remembering that in her neighborhood, a passing car, she lived way up in the hills, so it would be pretty rare if, uh, you know, people went up that road. You'd probably recognize every car that went up that road because there was no other reason to be up on that road. But um, what had happened was that she went to Vegas and she put her mail on hold. This was around, let's see, 2011, possibly 2010, late 2010. In fact, put her mail on hold. And also she took her phone off the hook. And since her neighbors were clearly I don't know, it became evident to them that she didn't want to interact with the neighbors. The neighbors didn't interact with her. And that's how this incident sort of happened. So her mail was on hold. Finally, the post office had had, had so much of their mail that they didn't they couldn't handle it anymore so they took it to her house and dropped it off so the mail in the mailbox crammed in the mailbox um also she had that the, that street had had telephone books delivered earlier and hers were gone after a couple of days don't know who took them but the, that's one of the things that the neighbors thought well she's home because the telephone books have been dragged in the house or so they thought but finally a woman by the name of susan savage uh got concerned because because of the mail and there were cobwebs in the mailbox and she decided to climb up the hill and have a look and this is what this is a quote from susan uh, last wednesday 
that would be the April 27th of 2011, I saw cobwebs forming inside of the mailbox. I just knew something was wrong. So I knocked on her gate for a long time and it was impossible to open. Uh, it was bolted twice, nailed shut, and then braced at the base with a two by four. Trust me, it was not easily accessible from the street. Uh, if it was, our mail carrier might've been able to make contact with her sooner. I ended up scaling her steeply graded hillside, stepping over high metal barricades and bloodying myself in the process till I finally got onto her property. All the doors and windows were locked and reinforced from within. I knocked on every window, uh, every door, calling her name the whole time. I could see that the lights were on, but there was no response. I went down to the front door of the house, saw the broken window pane, which is ultimately how she got in. Um, she found Yvette, or what the, appeared to be a human being, on the floor in front of the electric heater that was on. So that there's no telling how, how long Yvette Vickers was, was laying there. She, her body was found on the floor and she was mummified, barely recognizable. It took him a while to figure out if, it was, if, she was, if the body was male or female. Uh, she had literally, she was on the sofa uh, and literally fallen off the sofa and literally melted into the floor. And, um, yeah, they couldn't positively identify her. Uh, she did have a brother that hadn't been hadn't seen her in a year. There were a few family members, but she apparently severed ties with most of them. Um, but the house in Benedict Canyon stood there empty until it was ultimately purchased and demolished. Now, while it was uh, empty, I was given access to it. Actually, my friend Jane and I, Jane Osborne, hey Jane, uh, she and I both got into the house to have a look around and Yvette was gone so was most of it uh, most of the furniture and things like that but there was still a lot of stuff there the uh the cabinets had food in them the kitchen drawers had you know tools and things in them and the uh, medicine chest was full like it hadn't been touched and there were all sorts of things in there and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it. I, I filled my bag with it this stuff was belonged to a hollywood celebrity you know that's what we do it's where she died it's her things and their personal things which i quite like and Instead of you know an autograph or something like that, I like you know a necktie or 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 something like that. So um, so I, I regret not getting some of the things actually because the house is gone. It went with it, and uh, but we did get a few things, including as I mentioned the bells that were on the gate. Uh, we took the bells from the gate and put them on the office of Dearly Departed Tours. And it's good luck to have bells ringing when someone comes in and out of the shop, and uh, so we we're quite quite pleased with that. I've always been really fascinated with uh, true crime, death, horrible things. Knock, knock. Hey. <laughs> Hi. And I got some nail polish, a paper towel holder, and even a measuring tape, the Yvette Vickers measuring tape, which we still use to this day. So Yvette Vickers is not forgotten. Say their name out loud or use their measuring tape and they don't get forgot. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna read some of her autopsy report. And it's gonna be a simple read. So this is the investigator's narrative of what happened and how Yvette was found. On April 27, 2011, at 1512 hours, Officer Avalos reported the case to the LA County Coroner. And, uh, and the coroner arrived at the location at 1655 hours and departed at 1810. So he wasn't there for very long. The place of death was Yvette's house, 10021 West Wanda Drive. And this is the statement. According to information provided by the officer at the scene, the decedent, meaning Yvette, was found unresponsive approximately 1,400 hours every two o'clock by Susan Savage, the neighbor who broke a window to enter the secure location to conduct a welfare check. Upon finding the decedent, she then proceeded to call 911. Uh, fire department responded to the location, pronounced death at uh, 1405. They got there fast, five minutes, without medical intervention. The decedent could not be positively identified, although it was quite likely they knew who it was. However, the neighbor advised police that an elderly female Caucasian resided at the location alone. Identification found at the location may indicate that it may have been Yvette Vickers. So they found her wallet in her purse, probably her driver's license, if she had a car. I know she had a garage. 
no known medical history. Uh, okay, so the scene was very small, two-story residence, pack rat conditions. She was a hoarder, and her house was infested. There were rat droppings everywhere. There were even trees in the house growing through the walls. I mean, it was it was an estate. Um, there was still electric and telephone service, although the phone was off the hook. The decedent was found in the second story lying on the left side of the carpet. There were numerous empty brandy bottles scattered about. The body, a decedent was an adult that was found lying on the left side of the carpet floor. And I'll show you the picture of where she was found. And, and for you guys that don't want to see it, skip the next 10 seconds of this video. Because you'll see where her body landed on the floor. Uh, she was wearing a green top. The amb ambient temperature, unregulated, was 88 degrees at, uh, at 5.20 p.m. A liver temperature was not obtained. However, she was cool to the touch. Uh, rigor mortis had, has resolved, meaning she was no longer, you know, there's no more longer uh, rigor mortis. She was in the advanced state of decomposition. Now, what I'm going to, well, the, you'll, you'll see the, uh, I'll put the, um, the diagram of what they found but uh but i'll read the ex external examination the body is that of a severe decomposed and mummified body it appears that it belongs to an elderly person probably a female numerous maggots are present the external examination discloses multiple areas with missing soft tissues especially the chest her head i should say the decedent's head is um Oh, I see. The decedent's head as well, as some of the areas of the upper and lower extremities are skeletonized without any soft tissue present. The head shows a small area with gray hair. No eyes are present. Examination of her chest uh, and abdomen reveals no internal organs. The areas where these organs, where these organs were present, are filled with spider web like material. The central uh, part of the decedent's chest is in the area where the aorta was present shows calcified tissue. Examination of the decedent's hands discloses markedly dehydrated fingers. The ends of the fingers show thin, long nails. The examination of the external genitalia is suggestive of a female. Tissue which appears to be part of the lady parts as well as, uh, as, well as the pubic hair is present. The examination of the head discloses no brain tissue. The skeletal bones, including the decedent's ribs, are markedly dislocated. Uh, no trauma was identified and the, the opinion of the coroner due to the severe decomposition of the body the precise cause of death cannot be established the finding of the calcified area in the place where thoracic aorta was present as well as the advanced age of the disease is suggested of probable arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease in my opinion the mode of death is natural they did as much as they could uh, and there was really just nothing to work with. I think they even tried to test for uh, for drugs, but there was, I mean, it's, this report is almost completely empty. Body, probable Yvette Vickers, found in her residence in the state of decomposition, uh, pronounced dead by paramedics, advanced decomp, all internal organs are absent, maggot infestation, no signs of tissue present, x-ray, uh, many joints dislocated due to the de decomposition. So she basically was consumed by the earth. Actually, her house was being consumed by the earth as well. Uh, you'll see. I'll put this. Uh, I'll put this on. Um, so you'll see this up close. But it says some gray hair, a probable breast, uh, skeletonized head, no eyes, dislocated joint, absent soft tissues, absent internal organs, absent soft tissues, thin long nails. I mean. Yeah, she was, and see, there's no way they could test for ethanol, drugs, barbiturates, cocaine, and, so there were, and fentanyl. See, I could say these names, but, um, but yeah. So Corey Yvette Vickers just rotted away. She wanted to be left alone. They left her alone, and she ended up passing away of natural causes on her sofa, and no one found her for several months. It wasn't a year. I mean, they do say it was, you know, she'd been laying there for a year. I don't think it's like that, but having gone in that house and seeing how, uh, What's the word for it, Troy? That when it's so, you know, desolate, I guess, is what it is. Because it was in the woods. Even though it was right off Benedict Canyon and easy to get to, it was surrounded by wildlife. So it's not a surprise. And plus, she had a rat-infested house. 
Before I end this video, I just want to take the opportunity to thank Jane Osborne and thank my buddy Harry for making this visit to Yvette's house possible. But I also want to show you a few more pictures of the inside of this house. Uh, to say that it was hoarder or, you know, I don't know. I can't imagine. It was it was filthy and literally being consumed by the mountain. You can see by some of these pictures, the, the trees were actually breaking through the house and growing in the house. Not to mention, well, mentioning the patches of black mold. So um, there, although there was, you know, evidence of bug killer, but it was still infested and filthy and really poor living conditions. But look at these pictures of Yvette when she was younger. Uh, these photographs from Playboy were actually taken on her property and we were able to find the actual locations where they were taken. So it was, it was an incredible transformation from such a gorgeous, you know, wild little house up in the hills to, you know, what eventually came of it. And I don't know, that's fascinating. It defines what I find fascinating. So, um, Yvette Vickers passed away. They found her in April of, uh, April 27th of 2011. That's when she was pronounced dead. So the points to remember, she was a very private person. She didn't interact with neighbors. She was a bit paranoid and convinced that people were watching her. Uh, her phone was off the hook. People did become concerned about her. People did try to reach out to her, but she just slipped through the cracks, literally. So um, that's Yvette Vickers. Um, that's something else, but you know, she was in Sunset Boulevard. She was in a few movies. I called you people three times and no one's come over here. It stinks, that's what it is. The whole neighborhood is reeking with something rotten and it's coming from my next door neighbor's backyard. So God bless her. Um, yeah, sad, very, very sad story, but an interesting one, you can't deny that. And uh, the items that we got from her house were shown at uh, the Dooley Departed Museum when we, when we still had it open. It'll be open again someday. And that's that. So um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. And until next time. You heard me.